Welcome and thank you for joining us, Dr. Ngozwana. Hey, good morning and how are you? I'm good, thank you, Doctor. Doctor, as we prepare for the BioAfrica conference and the race is on to find a vaccine for COVID-19, please share with us how much has been achieved from the discussion recently held. Well, I think, um, first of all, maybe just to talk about the BioAfrica conference to say that, um, you know, this would have been our third iteration of the BioAfrica convention run by Africa Bio. Uh, it was supposed to be held in Durban in August this year, but obviously with COVID-19, we've had to, you know, make other plans and we'll be moving to a digital conference um, in, 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 in August as, as planned. In the discussion that we had last week, we looked at a number of issues, including the regulatory aspects of, uh, you know, dealing with new products for COVID. We looked at, um, you know, the platform that Africa Bio has set up. Um, it's, a, it's basically a digital platform that has a number of elements in it. One is around the innovation itself and exposing African innovations and giving them a platform, um, linking up innovators from around the continent, um, hopefully being able to then partner them with them, you know, with mm -hmm. researchers, other researchers, with mentors, even maybe linking them with finance. And then there's an, an ideas platform. This is the innovation and ideas platform. Then you have your, your marketplace, which you just launched this past Friday. The marketplace is really a platform that we, we've set up to try and democratize economic activity around this. So your smaller players, your emerging players who don't have the economic muscle will be able to advertise their, product, their products on this platform. It be visible to the marketplace and for people who are looking to buy um, COVID products. Obviously, the focus now is on COVID, but eventually we want to roll this across the continent and to roll it across a number of other different innovations coming out of Africa. Again, because of the nature of what we are dealing with and the time we are in, there is a bit of a focus on COVID now. Then there's a communications platform which seeks to demystify innovation, mm -hmm. which seeks to prevent this to people in a language and in a voice they can understand. And hopefully this is something that will also excite youngsters and get them into the scientific space. In this uh, communications portal, we'll be able to also answer people's questions around COVID. What is it? How do you deal with it? And what not? Doctor, in terms of the potential treatments and vaccines, what can Africa offer the world when it comes to this pandemic? So as um, was discussed there, I mean, they are in excess now of um, 1,200, um, you know, trials that are in progress around the world. Africa is participating in some of those trials as well. And these are largely around all drugs that are known but being repurposed for, for, for COVID treatment. Um, so, for example, South Africa is part of the solidarity trial that the WHO is doing in multiple countries around the world. We are also part of the trials around things like convalescent plasma. There will be other trials as vaccines come through and whatnot. So on the first, the first part is we are part of those. In terms of the development, um, you know, one is aware, for example, of a local company that is involved in a polyclonal, you know, antibody strategy to address this, both from a prophylactic view, but also as a therapeutic agent. Right? There are other you know, areas of research where Africa is involved, whether it's through, you know, your traditional medicines. We've seen the Madagascar example, for example, with Artemisia. We know that in other parts of the world, there's also work going on, whether it's around the development of um, new testing technologies, um, whether it's through, you know, the development of things like, or manufacturing of things like ventilators. Um, for example, in, in Kenya, students at um, Kenyatta University have managed 15 students from engineering, medicine and pharmacy, have managed to design and build a, a local innovator. In Nigeria, we've had a mechanical engineering student who, who also designed and, and built um, a ventilator. So there are elements of research around different aspects of this virus that are going on. Um, I think um, when it comes to things like vaccines, obviously expertise in vaccine um, research and development is something that you build up over a lot of time. It's also very capital intensive and there isn't um, a lot, although there are pockets here and there. We do have on the production side, obviously, excellent companies. Biovac in Cape Town is one. 
which would um, hopefully play a role in this in the future. I think the the key thing is just to understand that even the the capabilities that are available, given the competencies that we have, Africa is playing a role, especially in those uh, clinical trials that I've mentioned. And from your uh, from your discussions, uh, what is the what does it look like in terms of the success at the moment with regards to the vaccines and the treatment out there? So look, I mean, um, there have been a lot of trials already that are ongoing on known drugs, um, you know, that are being repurposed for the treatment of COVID. A famous one that's constantly quoted is chloroquine, for example. There are other agents, azithromycin, um, there are other you know, antivirals that are well known. Um, and, and it's too early to say there have been one or two trials with small numbers of patients that have maybe offered conflicting evidence. So it's early to say we'll see, for example, the solidarity trials and the WHO, what they give us um, after multiple tra multi trial with multiple patients um, um, give us. In terms of the vaccine trials, um, we, we, we haven't seen a lot of traction. Again, this is something that takes time to develop. There are a number of companies in excess of 140 vaccines under development. I think there are about 10 that are already now in, in, in some form of human trial or other, but it's too early. And, and you know, to the question that was also discussed, when do we see a vaccine on the market? I think we're probably looking at about 18 months to two years, because remember, you have to prove that the products are safe um, in humans. You have to then prove that they are efficacious in preventing the, the you know, infection. So this is something that takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. It's very capital intensive as well. But of course, you know, done properly under international protocols, they, we will be able to get those results. Unfortunately, it will just take a bit of time. Um, as I say, 18 months to two years possibly. Doctor, do you know how many South Africans are part of the solidarity trial? Well, the country has obviously um, signed up to the WHO, um, you know, um, to be part of this. I cannot say specifically how many, but I know that we will be, once the regulatory approvals are, are sorted out, we will sign up patients in the various institutions that have been identified. At the same time, I'm sure you'd be aware that the National Blood Laboratory uh, Service has also, a uh, blood transfusion service, sorry, has also started some work and they're doing a trial on convalescent plasma, where they've basically taken people who had been infected, who had developed antibodies, and they are now using this therapeutically to see if it will offer protection um, to, to other, you know, uh, patients. So there is a, quite a bit, and I think as time goes, as more patients, you get more patients, there will be a lot more work than done in South Africa. But at this point, I'm unable to tell you exactly the numbers that are involved. 